Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, I want to talk about performance and optimization of database queries. So at IdeaPro, we focus on fast loading websites. And from the structure of the website on the front end, you have your HTML, your JavaScript, your CSS, uh, images, video files, any of that kind of stuff all needs to be optimized for the search engines and for um, user experience, right? So you've got your HTML needs to be um, minified, which I'm gonna do another video on that. Um, your JavaScript needs to be minified and uh, deferred. Your CSS needs to be minified. There's, there's all kinds of optimizations on the code side that everyone sees, the public side. But there's also optimization on the PHP side of WordPress that you need to be aware of. And I'm gonna show you how to see what's going on with the PHP code as far as the database queries because that's where your site can get really, really slow. And it's absolutely scary sometimes whenever we turn on uh, what I'm gonna show you in just a second on some sites and it's like 80, 90, even 150 sometimes database queries to load one page, all right? So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to write a little function that will show you how many queries you have. And then we're gonna write another little thing that will show you what queries are actually happening so that you can manage those and, and change those around, all right? So let's get started. So here on our functions.php page, and of course you can write this in a plugin if you would like. Um, I do that, I have a plugin that we put on a lot of our sites that will show us what a site is doing. Um, but we're gonna write it here in the functions.php page and you can do it as a plugin. If you need to know how to build a plugin, I've made videos about it. I'll link those in the cards in the description. Um, but we're also gonna use a function that I've made another video on. It's developing in live mode. So it's important to have, to know what that video is and to be able to develop in live mode because we only want to show ourselves, the developers, what's going on with the database queries. We don't want to sh show the rest of the world. So I'll show you that here in just a second. All right. So here at the top of the functions.php pile, file, pile, we're going to create a new function, number db queries, All right? All right. So then we're going to add an action here and we're actually going to put this in the WP foot. footer, WP footer. And we're going to do number of queries and that's our callback. So what this basically, this add action, if you haven't watched any of my other videos or you don't know what this is, add action basically does the first action here, which is the WP footer. So anything you put in here should show up in the footer of your page if your theme is built correctly. So add action is, and we're going to do WP footer and then number of db queries is our function here it's the callback right so we want in the wp footer we want this function to run okay so in the video in another video i did previous to this video it's called developing in live um, environment i'll link it to the card here it basically shows you how to create a function that's is developer and basically what that does is anything that you do you wrap in that in developer function is developer function and it won't be seen to the rest of the public it'll just be seen to you now if your ip address changes you have to change that ip address in that function uh, i use a vpn for everything that we do and our vpn ip address doesn't ever change so i don't ever have to change it which is a good thing so if you're not using a vpn you should for that reason alone all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say if is that was right developer and this is a function that we have um, in our functions.php file already if is developer and then we're going to echo the get number queries it's that simple wordpress has already provided us a function 
that will get the number of database queries, all right? But we can also do it, go a little bit farther. We can say echo, and then here we can say queries, queries, ah, come on, queries in, um, we wanna do timer stop, echo seconds. Now, basically what this does is it's gonna tell us the number of queries in 15 seconds or however long it is. So the reason why that's important is because you need to know how long it's taking to load those queries, all right? So now we have this, we're gonna save this file. We're gonna come over to our live site here, the ideapro.io site, which we use for testing and developing and stuff like that. We're gonna do a refresh and we still have something left over from another page. So let's go to do that. Let's get rid of this. That was that is developer um, video made just a minute ago. We don't want that to show up. All right, so then we're gonna do a refresh here. So now we have 16 queries in, why did it not timer stop? Oh, there we go. All right, so 16 queries in 0 0.204 seconds. Now, that doesn't mean that's the entire load time of the website. That is the load time of those queries. Now, if you have a bunch of images on your site and all that stuff, it's still gonna give you 0 0.204 seconds because that's not the overall load time of the entire site. To get the overall load time of the entire site, you need a tool like GT Metrics or um, Google's uh, PageSpeed tool, or you can even do it in JavaScript, but your JavaScript needs to be deferred and you need to make sure that your timer is the last thing that runs in your JavaScript file, right? Um, the tools like GT Metrics show you a real live environment uh, of what's going on. You can also use the Google um, console to show you how long that page is taking to load. And you can even change it if you use the uh, mobile side of it. You can change to see how long that page is going to take to load if you were on a mobile device. Right? And I can do that. I can do another video to show you all that later on. But in this, we're going to talk about the database queries. So right now we have 16 queries in 2.204 seconds. Now I want to see what those queries are. All right. So there's two things that we need to do on this to see that is, um, sorry, I had a message pop up over here, is in our wpconfig.php file, we need to add a, um, a line to our WP config file, all right? So we're gonna say define, and we're gonna say save queries, true, okay? And so what this is, it's, it's defining the constant save queries, and it's telling it to be true, all right? So with that in there, WordPress knows to save those queries and that way we can export those or display those queries so we can, we can see what's going on, all right? So now we want to, again, we're in that is developer function that we built in the other video that I'll link in the, uh, the cards in the description here. Is developer just says, hey, the IP address that we're using is the only people that can see this. So to the public, you can't see it. And let me show you, I'll show you real quickly. So we can see this here. If I turn off my VPN and I refresh the page, now it's gone. And that's why you want the, you don't want the public to be able to see, see that. So let's turn back on the VPN. All right. And it's connected. All right. Now we can refresh the page and now we can see our 16 queries in 1.06 seconds. Now, the reason why that's changed, if we refresh again, it's gonna give us a different number, 0.211 seconds. What's important to understand is your server load is gonna matter, right? If you've got a bunch of sites on your server, uh, you're on a shared hosting, 
that load time is going to differ depending on what the uh, the traffic to the server is or what the server is doing in the background. So if you've got a lot of stuff running on the server, it's going to take longer to load these database queries. So as you refresh the page, you're going to get different query times for each one. But on average, you're going to get pretty much the same on a regular basis until you let it set for a little while, or like I disconnected from my VPN and then reconnected, it kind of goes, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay. So 0.231 seconds. That's a fast loading time. It's two tenths of a second, All right? So 16 queries. So now we want to go over here. So now we want to see what those queries are so that we can manage those queries and hopefully eliminate some of them, All right? So let's do, um, Let's do print or uh, print R, which will print the array and show all the details. This line of code that I do here, it's a pre-built, um, it's pre-built into Sublime. I created this myself. You can do that. I'll make a video on how to do that, but I use this a lot. I like to print out the array or the object that that I'm working with. So I just type in PRI and, and it's right there at the top. I hit enter and it fills it in. So now what we want to do is we want to put in the WPD and queries. Now what this is, is the WPD, WPD, WPDB is the WordPress object that connects to the database, all right? So anytime you do a database query in WordPress, you don't necessarily have to use that. If you use WP query to like pull posts and stuff like that, but if you wanna build your own custom query, which I've done a video on that, I'll put that in the card and in the description, give me a list of like 18 videos in the description. I've done a video on custom database queries, and this is gonna go really good with this because you want to know what those queries are. And if they're queries that you wrote, you want to optimize those in as few of queries as possible. All right. So let's do WPD queries. And so now if we go back here and we refresh the page, oh, we need to include WPDB up here. There we go. So global WordPress DB. All right. So now we can refresh. Now it's gonna show us all 16 queries, zero through 15, okay? Which is actually 16 because it starts with it starts with zero. So now we can see each individual query and what that query is actually doing, all right? So the one thing I wanna talk about, and I'm not saying anything bad about Yoast, but here we have 16 database queries. If we go into our plugins, we come down here to Yoast and we deactivate Yoast. And we refresh this page. 10 queries. Yoast requires six database queries for every page load. Now, that's to me, that's a lot. Um, Yoast is important to use for SEO, but I want you to be aware of the number of queries that it uses. The other thing about performance and optimizing your, your database is if you're on a hosting like Amazon Web Services, where you pay for the amount of CPU usage, you want to eliminate as much of that as possible to save you money, to save server resources, and to just make the overall website load faster. So just by turning off Yoast, the Yoast SEO plugin, we've saved six database queries. Now, does the benefits outweigh the, you know, six database queries? For sure, you definitely wanna use Yoast SEO plugin, but this gives you an idea of what is running and what you can eliminate. So if you install a plugin and you go, hey, it's taking, you know, 10 queries, and then you install this plugin and now you're up to 40 queries, it's probably not a good plugin to use. So that's re one reason why we build our own plugins. We build custom uh, plugins. We build custom functions is to eliminate some of this stuff and it makes our sites load a whole lot faster. So I can expand on this in another video if I need to, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you 
in the optimization or at least seeing what's running on the website and gives you an idea of what plugins are doing what. Turn off all the plugins on a dev site or something like that. Turn off all the plugins, see how many database queries is just taking to load your page. A lot of times it's gonna be a lot higher than 10. I don't have a menu up here, um, which a menu for WordPress is gonna do, you know, some more queries, um, a header menu, a footer menu, sidebars, like all the different stuff that you add, it adds a lot. And typically a, word, a website will load 60 to 80 database queries per page load. I like to keep it a lot, lot lower than that. So on some of our, my personal sites or some of our you know, company sites, I don't use plugins that add a lot of uh, database queries to the page load. I also don't use a lot of uh, plugins that add tables to the database. So I like to keep the database lean, clean, fast and loading as few of the database queries as possible. So hope you like this video. Remember to subscribe, click the like button, click the bell for notifications, share this with anybody that you think will learn from it or it will help them um, make their site you know, performance better. And I'll see you in the next video.